You know, that's kind of a fun title. I like this devotional. It always seems to speak to my heart. <laughs> no, that's not why I like it. That would be making the, the, the book and my understanding of it the quote-unquote power behind it, so to speak. But I like it because God speaks to me. And as he does, I share it with you. And as we share it together, you keep me reading my devotionals daily. And I keep reminding myself how there are those that have not experienced or seen the things that I've seen or enjoyed the things that I've enjoyed in my life. And that participating in them in a moment of focusing in on God is something we do together in emotional. When things go wrong, <laughs> and I'll tell you about it in a minute. <laughs> give, when things go wrong, give thanks in everything, God says. Sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it? Like when you miss a plane. I was on a speaking trip that required me to go from Philadelphia to Houston to Los Angeles. In leaving Philadelphia, however, I got caught in traffic and missed my plane. I arrived at the airport only five minutes late. But in these days of jammed up traffic patterns and late arrivals and takeoffs, this was one plane that was on time, and God didn't hold the plane. <laughs> Busy and tired as I was, the prospect of hours of delay loomed like a giant wall of frustration. In these circumstances, it was hard to give thanks. At the give thanks at the time, it simply seemed that all would be all that would come from missing my plane was sheer exhaustion. But all I could see were the present circumstances. My view was limited from where my two feet stood on planet Earth. In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Although we may know this scripture backwards and forward, when we cannot see any earthly reason for what has happened, it's hard to believe we should give thanks. Our perspective is limited to the present. The present time, the present situation, the present inconvenience, the present pain, the present trial, the present. This present perspective ties our tongues so that instead of using them to say, Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Although I do not understand. They were back, they wag back and forth in murmuring, don't they? Are you like me? And although we may confine our murmuring under our breath, Still, it fills the air with discontent, and our attitude is affected. Our nerves become taut with stress. The whole atmosphere becomes charged with electricity that could explode at any moment. It's hard to give thanks. And yet, hard or not, I know that when I do not give thanks, I am walking in unbelief. And unbelief is sin. When I missed that plane in Philadelphia, I didn't stew about it in such a way that I acted or spoke unbecomingly. No, of course not. But I must admit, I was a little stressed. I wished that I had control of the whole situation, that things would have been different. I wouldn't have missed the plane. However, I would have missed what God had in mind. What did he have in mind? A precious flight attendant who was hurting, confused, disillusioned? A woman who had a form of godliness but needed Jesus? And what else did God do so that I wouldn't miss her? Well, I finally got my connecting flight, but that flight never even went to Houston. By that time, Hurricane Gilbert was headed there too, so they routed us straight to Los Angeles. For some reason, I wasn't able to sleep, wasn't even sleepy. So in the middle of the night, when most of the other passengers were curled up, stretched out, or zonked out, I was witness to the most majestic and awesome light show I have ever seen. God lit up the distant sky, showing off the magnificence of its cloud formations in a series of lightning flashes on three different stages. Light would dart from one to the other, then return to the first, and move again to stage two, and then to stage three. This went on for almost 20 minutes. I had moved to a vacant window seat to get a better view, and one of the flight attendants came to gaze at the spectacle with me, saying that she had never seen anything like it. All that I could say as I peered out the window was, how magnificent. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Oh, Father, it's so awesome. As the lightning comes from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. I didn't know it at the time, but the stewardess was listening. After I returned to my seat, she came to where I was sitting 
leaning on an armrest across the aisle, she said, I've seen you on television. It almost sounds like an accusation. I wondered why. To make a long story short, she moved up to a row of empty seats in first class where we could talk privately. Then I knew why I had missed my plane, why I was headed to Los Angeles and not Houston, and why God had put on his light show. It was for her. All this had been arranged for one precious, confused, and lost little lamb. Awesome, isn't it? At the time when I was to give thanks and rest in his sovereignty rather than be stressed out by the circumstances, I didn't know why. Usually God doesn't let us know, at least not right away. And sometimes we won't ever know. But he asks us to walk in faith, to thank him in faith. Because our sovereign God is never out of control, because he rules over all the small and the big things of life, the tragedies and the triumphs, and because he loves us with an everlasting love, we can give thanks in everything. Isn't that what he said? I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. These words were spoken first to Israel, but they are for all of, our all of God's children, for he is the one who causes all things to work together for good to conform us to the image of his son. Therefore, in all things, in everything, we can give thanks. We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. You know, I laugh about that today because today, in such a way as to fulfill this word, as people talk in the religious -y terminologies, I got the word and the word filled me and you know the word is me and the word became me and the word fit my circumstances and now I know that it's the word of God to me you know <laughs> yeah right okay but anyways for me yeah I uh, in recording have been challenged because for whatever reason YouTube or wherever I'm uploading is not uploading so I could look at that and go man you know Lord that's a real bummer man you know, I can't get this done, what I'm doing, and what I'm doing, I need to do because I need to do it because, you know, after all, we need to do it. Or I could just leave the doo-doos alone and go back to God and say, thanks, Lord, you know. I kind of like the idea of not having to worry about whether it uploads, downloads, side loads, if it's a load, or if it just needs to be dumped as a load. <laughs> or if I just take a load off my feet. Because God is in control. People tell me about how they've got to get all excitable and all, you know, organized so that they can fight these political fights or fight this whatever rights they think they got and whatever distractions they think they got to get involved in and whatever reasons and righteous causes that they have to follow and pursue. And, you know, <laughs> God bless them. But I just laugh because I think it's funny. I really do. To spend all that energy and all that time every few years doing the same thing over and over and over again, you know, and it's a never-ending cycle of just a hamster chasing the cage, you know, and little do they realize that, you know, these little hamsters, God has in control. He does. <laughs> so, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm going to give thanks in everything. I even thank God for the president. I thank him for him, and I thank God that, you know, every four years there's an election, and I thank God that, you know, I can pray for anyone who gets elected, no matter who they are, whether it be the current one, or the next one, or the past one, <laughs> but in the present, I will give thanks, for that is the will of God in Christ Jesus.